Now that a lot of you are probably pessimistic about the muscle car's future from V8 Challengers and Chargers dying so soon and Camaros expected to follow, Ford just unveiled the next-gen V8-powered Mustang. This new S650 seems very promising, but that might be because in some ways Ford seems to be following Dodge's technique from the last, like, 15 years. That's not bad. But this, the eternal flame. Well, today we're going over all of the good, bad, weird, and unchanged stuff about the new S650 Mustang. Let's get into it. If you've missed any news on the future of Dodge's cars, the Camaro, or even the Corvette, check out any of my videos on those and subscribe to keep up with the latest news and for other stuff about the car world. Also, kind of big announcement, I just started a new gaming channel where my best friend slash editor and I will be playing Forza and just kind of messing around. If any of you want to join, send me a DM on Instagram, and I'm also hoping to get a Discord server up for that real soon. After this, let me know if you love or hate the new Mustang, if you agree with my thoughts, or if you think that I'm a complete idiot. Maybe just comment like the word cauliflower instead of actually calling me an idiot to lighten the hit, but I'll still get the message. Now on to the actual news for the 7th gen Mustang. These are going to start out as 2024 model cars and rumors are that they're going to run for the next 8 years instead of the typical 6, but I'll wait to talk about all the future stuff. The car was unveiled on September 14th, but like 4-6 to six hours before the reveal, official exterior and interior pictures were leaked just so a lot of Ford's thunder could be taken away. Starting with the outside of the car, it's obviously a modified S550 platform with a lot of body panels just slightly adjusted. The car has a new front bumper and hood with the GTs having a new hood vent, slightly taller sides of the lower grille, and a slightly different upper grille. You can kind of see where they got inspiration from other cars like the Mach 1 for the bottom of the bumper and really small touches from the S550 GTs like these parts in the grille. A few people have also said it looks like a BMW, which I can kind of see when I try to and others have said that it's like a new Camaro, which I definitely see. Between the evil smile in the lower grille where it curves up at the sides and the hood vent, I think it's pretty Camaro-y, which makes the design strange to me, but I do like the evil look overall and the vent. I personally think the front end could look a little bit better. From certain angles, I'm not really a fan of how much more emphasized and pronounced the top grille is. I feel like if it stuck out less and didn't have so much of a border around the edge, these front ends would look a little bit better. It is probably a lot better in person and overall that'll do pig that'll do okay Moving around to the sides, it's pretty much the same classic profile as the 550s, but it seems like they got rid of a lot of the side body lines. Between the front and rear bumpers, I think it's kinda bland looking. I get they must have been going for a clean, updated look, but I feel like some small touches could have gone a long way here. Even if they just emphasized the low-key curves in front of the rear wheel arches or added some detail in the lower, like, two-thirds of the sides, it would have been pretty cool, but again... Not bad. The front looks really cool from a side view, and the back doesn't look too bad to me either. But just something interesting is it almost looks a little modern JDM-ish to me. Moving to the back, I feel like the rear of the car is alright. I think it's cool, but not overly special or anything fantastic. I like the diffuser and spoiler that are pretty much copies of what was on the S550s, and I'm sort of a fan of the sharper edge towards the top of the trunk. The part I don't like, though, is the brake lights. It's nice that they follow the sharp stick out at the top, but I wish the lights themselves had more depth. I know they're probably not cheap, but they look very cheap LED coverish, and I feel like it almost makes the car look like a GT. A5 S550 remake that would have been called like the Stallion or something. Moving on from the exterior looks, these S650s are going to be running on 4th gen 5 liter Coyote V8s for the GTs and 2.3 liter EcoBoosts for the base. Apparently power numbers haven't been stated for the GTs and EcoBoosts, but it's expected that the 2.3 liters will have similar power to the Broncos with about 300 ponies under the hood. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> 
Also, a new trim called the Dark Horse is coming out to be a more track-focused, meaner, hunkered-down GT version, and those will also have Coyote engines, but they have 500 horsepower, so the GTs will probably be sitting below that. These Dark Horse trims also have slightly more aggressive details and an adjusted front bumper that has less of a focus on the top grille. I honestly think the Dark Horse front should have been the front end for the normal GTs, and then the Dark Horse trim could have taken that design further. Also, before the unveiling, I was thinking if Ford's going to keep the Coyote for the new gen, the horsepower should at least be 500 for the GTs. I feel like it's kind of skimpy just to move from 470 to like 490 if that's what they make it and call it a whole new generation. I can see how horsepower doesn't have to be the whole focus and at the end of the day these GTs are supposed to be for casual car enthusiasts and not people who just want more and more horsepower, but numbers wise I think it should be like 500. I don't know if I'm actually set that it's best for people who are actually going to be buying one of these to have 500 horsepower as if they need it. I think it could go either way, but let me know what you guys think of all the power numbers and changes to the exterior. The other way to tell these dark horses apart is by the small new side badge that Ford flashed about 12 hours before the reveal, which I think is pretty cool. It's a nice touch. All of these cars, whether it's the EcoBoost, GT, or Dark Horse, will be fitted to 6-speed manuals and 10-speed automatics. And I guess that's a pretty good transition to talk about the inside. First, I'll start with the good changes that they made inside. That shifter's pretty cool. Uh, no, wait, that was, uh, that was the same as the last gen. All right, now for the negative changes. What is up with the screens? It's kind of because of the screens that I don't like the interior. I don't think it's sleek or cool or necessary, and I'd rather see dials or at least a gauge mimicking screen like the 550s had and a small screen for the center if they absolutely had to have it. They obviously want to keep up with other brands because Tesla people like this stuff and everybody goes crazy about it, but the interior lost all shape and intensity that the gauges used to bring. And not every car now has to start looking like a Tesla. It's not a bad thing to have buttons while you're driving instead of a huge iPad. And they definitely shouldn't have made them appear like it's one solid screen. It makes it a lot worse in my opinion. Dodge put a huge screen in the Charger Daytona concept, and I'm not a fan of that either, but that is a concept, even if the real car ends up just like that, and that's a full EV. I feel like Ford keeping this Mustang only ICE powered, which we'll get into in a minute, kind of more so justifies not turning the interior into a lifeless TV room. And another reason why I think it's ridiculous is because they had to have it sticking up past the top of the dash, which is a pretty good indication that it wasn't a good fit. I feel like it was just not needed and makes the view from both inside and outside way less appealing, but I could only find a couple exterior pictures that show that area. They're also using Amazon Alexa and Ford Streaming to try to replace knobs and buttons, and if you saw my worst interior mods video, you already know how I feel about that, and we all know how great voice controls in a car always work. Okay, what do you want to say to May? May, you're a blithering idiot and your stupid car is ruining my day. Your message to May says, your brother is idiot and your stupid car is ready. Ready to send it. Your brother is idiot? What? He's never met my brother. How does he know he's an idiot? For two cool and unique parts about these Mustangs, first is they offer an electronic parking brake that looks like a traditional lever action handbrake, just so it's easier to go drifting with the car. Pretty cool feature. Second is that you can start the car from outside without even putting the key in by pressing a button. Wow, 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 wow. wow. And actually new for this gen, there's another button on the fob that lets you rev the car, which I kind of really like as immature and unnecessary as that is. So besides the ugly, unfitting screens inside and the iffy brake lights and steering wheel, the car is still going to have a great engine, manual transmission option, pretty mean looks on the outside, and it's got a couple cool new features. So as harsh as I was about the inside and maybe the blander sides of the car, I'm definitely excited to see these on the road, to hear them, and to see what people do with them. And even though I refer to the S550 so much, I know that change has to happen, and especially the GTs and dark horse trims will probably grow on me. Even like with the 2020 Camaros, I think small things like having a front lip can make all the difference in how some cars look, and that probably applies here too. 
I bet I'm going to see some bare bones versions of these that don't look all that great and others are going to have lips, side skirts, maybe a partial stripe and a loud exhaust and I'll be even more of a fan. As far as the future for this gen goes, rumors were going around before that an all wheel drive and a hybrid option were in the works, but now a lot of people are saying those planes are scrapped and neither are going to be offered in the S650. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about them keeping changes and options so minimal, but I guess props to them for keeping development and manufacturing costs as low as possible so they can keep their old fans and take advantage of the ICE, Camaro, Challenger, and Charger all dying just so they can rake in as much money as possible. I get that that's a very pessimistic view, but if you think about it, that's kind of all they did. They barely changed it just to get easy money coming in for the next eight years. Again, let me know if you guys like or don't like the new S650s, what you'd change, or if you think it's perfect. If you've got any questions, please feel free to DM me on Instagram. Please check out the new gaming channel. We have a lot of fun making those. Tell me what you'd want to see in the future, and subscribing if you enjoy would be pretty cool. As always, I hope you all enjoyed, and thank you very much for watching. I appreciate the support. I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great day.